everyone. My name is Joshua Bellamy. I'm Sam Kirkpatrick. And together we own and operate Bolted Bread, a small bakery in Stone Mill in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. Today we are going to be baking some sourdough bread in our field company Dutch oven. Baking bread at Bolted Bread is, is sort of a dream come true. We've got all the equipment necessary to bake like a really nice loaf of bread. So when I'm baking bread at home, I use a Dutch oven. Dutch ovens are a great tool for baking bread at home. They help to sort of equalize the temperature in your oven so you get a nice even bake. They also trap the steam, so the loaf sort of steams itself. That allows for like proper loaf expansion and it allows you to get a really nice crust and color on your loaf as well. Let's get started. Let's do it. So first things first, we are gonna refresh our sourdough starter. Now depending on your timeline, about eight hours before you're planning on mixing your dough, I will pull this out of the fridge or pull it out down from the counter and go ahead and refresh it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it and dump most of it in the trash and keep about a tablespoon's worth in the container, maybe about two tablespoons worth. You don't have to get super exact with it. Then I'm going to refresh it with equal parts water and whole grain flour. You can use rye flour, wheat flour. You can also use white flour. And I'm gonna go ahead and stir it up. I'm gonna keep this in a pretty temperate climate in my kitchen. So, you know, find a spot that's around 70 to 75 degrees. Usually on top of the refrigerator works well for that. But if you wanted to speed things up, you could find a warmer environment. So I've got uh, my flour scaled out here. Ta-da! That's my bread flour and my whole grain flour as well. So I'm just gonna add about 90 grams of this ripe starter right into the middle there. Add a little bit more. Then I'm gonna add my water as well. We're gonna add about 400 grams of water today. Once our flour and our starter and our water is scaled, that's everything that's in there except for the salt. We wanna hold the salt uh, back until a little bit later. But we're gonna get our flour and our water here and our starter and we're gonna start mixing it together. Some people like to use a spoon or a spatula. I like to use my hands just because it's another level of sensory feedback. That came together pretty quickly. It sure did, yeah. And I'm not gonna spend too much time right now kneading it. I'm just sort of bringing the starter in with the rest of the ingredients, making sure the starter is evenly distributed. And I'm also just making sure all the flour is hydrated. Nice little baking trick is to keep one hand pretty clean. So you can use that to spin the bowl. I'm gonna take my dough scraper and scrape all this excess dough off of my hands. You want that dough to go back into your loaf of bread rather than down the drain. I like to scrape down the sides too. Once your dough has come together, just like that, just like that, it's sort of a shaggy mess right now. Yeah. That's exactly how we want it. We don't want it to get too smooth right yet. Um, that'll come later on. I'm gonna throw a kitchen towel over the top of it and sort of leave it in a, a warmish spot in your kitchen for about 30 minutes. We'll come back to it and add the salt. It's been about 30 minutes since we hydrated our flour. Added our starter in as well. So now we are gonna add our salt, which I have scaled out here. So I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle the salt evenly over the top of the dough. Make sure it's all in there. Just wet your fingertips, sort of sprinkle that on top a little bit. That helps the salt dissolve, just so it's a little bit easier to incorporate into the dough. I'm gonna sort of smear it around the top. And once it's like a little bit dissolved, I'm gonna go ahead and start massaging it into the dough. Just like this. So it's been about 30 minutes since we added our salt and got it entirely dissolved in the flour and water. So we are gonna do our first round of stretching and folding. About every hour, we're gonna come back and stretch and fold this whole thing. So stretching and folding, really does a few different things. It strengthens the gluten. So by pulling it and folding it over itself, the gluten strands that are like really kinked up start to relax a little bit and start to organize. So stretching and folding also helps to redistribute the heat. The outside of the container might be warmer or cooler than the inside of the dough. And by folding the dough in on itself, 
they're sort of helping to equalize the temperature throughout. So it helps maintain more of a consistent fermentation. And finally, giving it these folds will help sort of relocate the yeast. It sort of gives the yeast access to unattenuated sugar in the dough, um, which is really nice for the yeast. So I try to give it like four or five good folds and place the towel back on top and we'll wait about an hour and come back and do the whole thing again. Just like that? Just like that. All right. It's been about three and a half, four hours since our first fold and I've been folding it every hour since then. Um, and I'm sort of pinching the dough every so often. And as it starts to get ready, you'll feel fermentation bubbles start to build up in it, start to like pop between your fingers. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm about to dump this out on the table to give it our pre-shape. Before I do that, I want like an even coating of flour on the table. And you could just sprinkle it, but that'll sort of give you like big clumps of flour. So what I like to do is take a big old healthy pinch like this and just sort of dust the table like that. And that'll give me wow. like a really even coating. Take my scraper, loosen up the dough, and just sort of like guide it right onto the table like that. And so from here, I sort of want to tuck in the sides to create an even shape. I'm going to tuck in the corners too. And I'm going to turn this entire thing upside down. I'm gonna leave it just like this for about 10 minutes before I come back and do my final shape. That 10 minute rest is important, called a bench rest, and that sort of allows the gluten to relax. And it sort of organizes the gluten in a way that'll make it a little bit easier for us to shape. So today I'm gonna to use a proofing basket. Um, this is one that we use at Bolted Bread. But yesterday at home, I baked a loaf of bread using just a metal pot as a proofing basket. So you don't need to get super fancy in it. Most people have a pot at their house. You can use that. The important part is that you want to use some sort of cloth to line your basket and coat it pretty heavily. So I'm going to use my scraper and sort of gently lift my dough off the uh, counter, turn it over, and I'm going to fold the outsides in. So folding the top about two-thirds of the way down, folding the bottom about two-thirds of the way up, folding the left about two-thirds of the way over to the right, and folding the right about two-thirds of the way over to the left. And I have this like nice square lump of dough. It's nice and evenly shaped, and I'm going to plop it right here into my proofing basket. So sort of depending on your schedule, if you've got a lot going on that day, you can pop this bad boy in the fridge, leave it in there overnight, bake it the next morning if you want to. Or you can leave it out on your counter and let it proof for about an hour, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less, and bake it that day. It's totally up to you. After a little while, I'll check the dough. What all it can be every 15 minutes. Just dust a little flour on there and then gently poke into it. And I'm sort of like judging how quickly the dough rebounds once I poke it. So this still feels a little strong. It's rebounding a little quickly. I'm gonna wait for it to relax just a little bit more. Our bread is proofed. Um, we have our dusted parchment here. So I'm gonna gently, using my hands, dump the dough out onto the parchment. Sort of even it out a little bit on the parchment. And for scoring it, I'm going to use a lom. You could also use a bread knife, works just as well. And I'm not really worried too much about making it beautiful. I just want it to open up nicely in the oven. So once it's scored, I'll take my scissors and cut some of this excess parchment off. So I have my hot Dutch oven here, protecting my hands, take the lid off, picking the dough up from the parchment, just gently lower it into the Dutch oven, watching your hands as you do it. I'll pop the lid on and bake it. All right.
right, so we've got our uh, final loaf of bread. And I think this is like perfect. It's not beautiful. It's not the prettiest loaf of bread I ever baked, but it's gonna taste awesome. It smells really good. Mm. And I think there's like a certain satisfaction and joy you can get out of like, you know, baking a loaf of bread in your own house in a Dutch oven. I'm gonna cut this bad boy open. It's got a nice crisp crust. Ooh, it's the warm. Wow. Some crumbs looking pretty good on it. Got some irregularity in the crumb structure. I can like smell the aromas from the fermentation from here. Give them a whiff, Sam. Wow. It's really nice. It's um, what's on the inside that counts with a loaf of bread, Sam? I've heard it my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> it's ours, man. It's special. We did it together. I didn't do much, and that's not any different than every other day. <laughs> so, man, you were here for support. I appreciate it.